Hello people, my name is Ferdy and in this video I will show you step by step how you can create a single product website where you can sell only one product and optimize it for conversions. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. This is the website. We will make a beautiful header over here made with Elementor Pro with a logo over here, an about area, a contact area and the emphasis on buy our book. The goal of this website is to sell one product and that's the book that my wife wrote with my sister-in-law. This is my wife, this is my sister-in-law. So I have a call to action over here, really straight to the point and a soft call to action. We write about things that women do not talk about and then there's a more information button which leads to the same page as the buy our book button. I added those two pages because maybe visitors want to learn a little bit more about those two beautiful people before they want to buy something and I want to give visitors the opportunity to reach out to them. We will also create a header optimized for smartphones again with the emphasis on buy our book and again with the menu and a link to their social media profile because through that people can see who they are. So over here you see real people with real followers. And this is our beautiful daughter. She's four days old right now. I know I should not be working right now, but I really wanted to finish this video. And here you can learn more about them. They write about things people do not often write about and they wrote a book about those same subjects. And that is what I'm selling on this website. So we scroll down, I will show you how to create this homepage. And again, a call to action over here, a nice footer with information you need when you sell things on the internet and the credits to the photographer. The about page, not really complicated where Anna writes about Paula and Paula writes about Anna. And then the contact page so people can reach out to them. And then it's all about this over here. We will use WooCommerce and cart flows to sell this product. And when you click over here, the menu is gone because right now I only have one goal to sell this product, not through a boring WooCommerce process, but with a straight to the point page with a checkout where everything is at one page. Let me show you here. I can show you more about the book, the title, some more information, more information when it will be published, information about the book and the price exclusive shipping cost. And people need to fill in these forms instead of filling out all those form fields in WooCommerce, which we do not need. And we will use Cardflows Pro in order to make this a beautiful form. So people don't have to fill in a lot of information they don't want to fill in or that seems to be overwhelming. This tutorial has the goal to create a website with one product that will convert. And when you have a really big list with a lot of information, people can get overwhelmed and they leave your page. So this is straight to the point, first name, last name, address, zip code, city, country, and email address. Here they can change the quantity and I will show you how you can change the shipping method from send it to the address or pick it up. So if people pick it up, they only pay for the book. Even if they buy 10 books, no shipping costs because they pick it up or when they send it based on our own configurations, they pay $9.95. If they buy only two books, they pay $7.50 and if they only buy one book, they pay $4.15. We can all set it up and I will show you step by step how you can do that. And then people can pay with credit card if you want to also with PayPal. They need to agree to the website terms and conditions and I will show you how to place this privacy policy area over here because that's mandatory and then people can place the order. And also this page is optimized for all devices. Because since a lot of people buy things on the internet through their phone and they have a big Instagram account that's getting bigger and bigger, it's really important that all your pages are optimized for all devices. When people buy this, they get instructions on when they can expect the book or how they can pick it up at the local pickup place. They get a confirmation email with information. The money goes to your Stripe account and that money on your Stripe account goes automatically to your bank account. And I will show you step by step how you can automate this whole process. If I go to fast for you, you can slow down the speed of the tutorial by clicking here and slowing down the speed. Or with the left arrow on your keyboard, you can go back five seconds in the video. In the description of this video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part in the video, you can click on the timestamp and you go directly to that part of the video. If you like what you're seeing so far or you're gonna like what you're going to see, then please like this video and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. Having said that, let's get started. There are four steps we'll take in this tutorial. The first step is to get a domain name and web hosting if you don't have it yet and install WordPress on it and I can give you 60% discount. After that, we will get Elemental Pro, create a beautiful header, footer and the pages of our website. The third step is to get WooCommerce and cart flows. And then we will create our product page and automate the whole process. So let's start with step one, getting a domain name and web hosting. 
If you have this already, that is great. Then you can skip this part. If you don't have it, let's go to webhosting134.com. Hit enter and you will be redirected to name hero in my opinion the best web hosting provider and that's not only my opinion is the opinion of a lot of people if you take a look at polls online and what people think about name hero why because websites are super fast it is easy to use and you really pay an affordable price especially since i can give you a discount of 66 percent so click on get started now you see the packages over here and when you are going to sell things on the internet don't use the starter cloud or the plus cloud go with the turbo cloud why over here we use SSD storage, which is already quite fast. But if you want to sell things, you need to use NVMe storage, which is so much faster than SSD storage. And Nameo is one of the few web hosting providers in the world that already offers these new technologies. It will cost you around $8 per month. And if you go for at least two years, you get a free domain name. And I will show you step-by-step step how everything works. It's pretty straightforward. The great thing about the Turbo plan is that you can have unlimited websites. So if you have your first website and it's running, you can create a second website and you don't need to pay more. You only pay for a new domain and it's still included in this $8 per month structure. You have enough storage to have so many websites. And if you have 100 websites, then you can upgrade to the business cloud. But right now, this one is perfectly fine to start your business. So I scroll down, I click on order now. And here we can choose a domain. If you already have a domain, you can fill it in over here. If you don't have a domain, you can type one over here. So if you say facebook.com, you can have a lot of different extensions. You can also search an extension. If I say facebook.com and I click on search, it will say facebook.com is unavailable. So of course you need to have a domain name that is free. So I go for the writing sisters in lol.com. It's available. You know what? I'll try writing sisters in law. It is available and it is free if I would go for at least two or three years. So if I click on continue, look at this. I can go for three years of web hosting and then I pay it at once, but then I have three years for the discounted price or I go for two years or for one year. So the longer the billing cycle, the more you save. So if you go for three years, you pay around $8 per month. And when you go for one year, you pay around $10 per month. $120 for the first year. And I think that's a great investment when you think of what you're going to sell. So let's do some math over here. I have one product I will sell in this tutorial and it's a real website with a real book and they're on pre-order. So imagine I would pay $120 and I take a look at the orders. Look at this in the latest two weeks or in the latest month, I made a thousand euros selling this book. Well, it's not even published yet. It is finished, but it's not published. So that's the power of web hosting. Through a website, you can sell stuff. And then I think that this investment is really affordable in comparison with the profit you can have from a website. So you can go for one year, two years, or three years. I will go for one year. And then all this stuff is fine. So I click on continue. If you want to, you can get ID protection. That means that people cannot see all the information you will fill in when you create an account here at name hero. So I will turn that on and then I click on continue. So we save a total of $180. We need to pay $138.72. And before we do that, we need to fill in some details over here. So I scroll down. I create a new account. My first name is Ferdy. Last name, my email address. My phone number. I need to fill in some billing details, like my company name, my address. And over here I say South Holland. How did you find us? Well, probably through YouTube because you're watching this video. And if you want to have support, you can have a pin. So I say 7890. I need to create a password, of course. And then I scroll down. I want to pay with credit card Stripe. So I need to fill in the details over here. And they want to have superhero specials. I turn this on because sometimes there is a major discount or if you want to go for a second year. So I will definitely turn this on and I have read and I agree to the terms of service. Okay. So I click on checkout. So, so far we invested $140. Awesome. The great thing with name hero is that our website is live immediately. So I can continue to the client area. Congratulations, now you have your own domain name and web hosting 
let's install WordPress. How can we do that? Well, we can click over here on my cloud. Click over here on your cloud package. And then I click on login to the C panel. Okay, so they're here to help us. Great. I'm also here to help you. I like to keep things clean. I close the windows. I can close. And I want to search for WordPress, WordPress manager by Softaculous. I click on it. And now I want to install WordPress. So really simple. I click over here on install, pretty straightforward. And then I can choose my domain name. And over here, it's important to choose HTTPS because then your website will be secure. Especially when you go to sell things on the internet, you need to have a secure website. And it's also good for the search results. So it says right now, a trusted SSL certificate was not found, but no worries. This is something that Name Hero will do within one hour. So over here, you can choose your domain name. I only have one domain name. And if you want to, you can install your website at your domain and then forward slash new or test or temp. But I want to do it in the main directory. So everybody that goes to this domain will see this WordPress website that we're going to install. Well, over here, we have the site name and the site description. I will leave it as it is. I will talk about it later. My admin username. So the username I choose to log in into our WordPress website. And then I want to create a password and it says it's quite strong. My admin email is info at 30 corp.com. And then I scroll down. I don't need to choose all this stuff unless you want to change the language of your website. Mine is English. So I keep it with that. I scroll down, I skip all this stuff and then I click on install. I can save the password and now it will be installed. It says within three or four minutes, but it's probably within 20 seconds. There it is already. So ladies and gentlemen, look at this. If we click on this link, we go to the back end of our website. That means that our website is live already within five minutes. That's amazing. So I click over here and we are live. And look at this. Our website is secure. I love this about Name Hero. It's so easy to configure everything. So I'm really happy with the service. I hope you will be too. I guess you will be. And if I have not mentioned it yet, you can have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you really don't like the service, somehow you can get your money back. So there's no risk. So what I can do, I can close this and I can close this. Let's talk about WordPress. We installed WordPress. This is the backend. Maybe it looks a little bit overwhelming. You think what is going on over here? This looks complicated. I will show you step by step how everything works. So this is the backend here. We can configure our website. And if I click over here, I see the front end of our website. This is what people will see when they go to writing sisters in law.com right now. It looks ugly and we're going to make it look so much better, but this is just the starting point of WordPress. I don't get it why they make something that is so ugly, but the great thing is we have a lot of room to improve this website. So the backend, if you want to go there, you can click over here. And if you're at the backend, you click on the same place, you go to the front end. When you are logged in, you're the only one that will see this bar at the top, no matter where you are. So you can go to the back end. You can customize the theme. You can create a new post or upload an image or a word document or PDF. You can create a new page or a new user. But I mainly use this to go to the back end and to the front end. And what I prefer, I click over here and before I click, I hold command. So I open a new tab. I like to work with a back end over here. And then the front end over here. So if I change something here, I can see the results. So it's personal preference, but it's what you can do. So I like to work in a clean environment. What do I mean with that? I want to clean up this website and remove the things I don't need. Because over here, for instance, I see a blog post. I don't want it. I don't need it. So I will remove a few things. First, I dismiss this message. Then I go to all the posts by clicking here. And I want to remove this post. I want to bring it to the trash. I go to the trash and I empty the trash. The same I want to do with pages. There are two pages that come by default. I want to select them all by clicking here. Bulk actions, move to the trash and apply. I go to the trash and I empty the trash. So now if I refresh this page, look at this. This will be gone because I removed it. Command R or F5 on the PC, nothing here. 
So that's what I mean with the back end and the front end. What else? I can go to appearance themes. I can remove all the themes I don't need and I don't use. Right now I use this theme. I click on theme details, delete. Okay. Theme details, delete. Okay. Then I want to go to the settings, permalinks. Right now it says day and name over here. That means when I create a new blog post, it will say this is your domain and the date will be in the URL over here. Well, that's not what I want. I want to have it like this, your domain and then the title of your blog post or of the page. That is better. That's the best for the search results. So definitely check the post name or select it and then save the changes. Then I want to go over here. Right now it says Howdy Ferdy Corp. I want to change it by editing my profile. And then I can change the color scheme over here. So if you like coffee, please don't use this one. Or if you prefer that one, I like this one, the default one. I think it's amazing how it looks and you will get used to it. Then over here, I want to fill in my first name, which is Ferdy and my latest or last name, Corpersook. And then over here, my display name publicity as Ferdy Corpersook. Wow. I can change my email address. I will do that. Info at ferdycorpershook.com. And when I do that, this picture will appear and I will show you why. I update the profile. There it is. I've done that now. So profiles updated. And now we see an image over here. How come? Well, this email address, info at ferdycorpershook.com, is active on Gravatar. So if I open this in a new tab, I can open a Gravatar account create my own. It costs $50. Now it's free. You can sign in, leave your email address, upload a picture, and then when you use that same email address that you use to sign in over here, it will link it. So then you have a nice image over here. You can set a new password if you want to, but I'm totally fine. I click on update profile Then I want to go to the settings general, and then I can change the site title. Well, this site is about my wife and my sister-in-law and they call themselves sisters-in-law. It's the wife of my brother. So sisters-in-law, sisters-in-law and they are called Anna and Paula Korpersuk. They write about the things in life that people do not often talk about, like the, the hard things they go through in life, anxiety, other stuff. They wrote a book about it. They are active on Instagram. So if I go to Instagram.com and I search for the schrijvende schoonzussen, that sounds weird. It's a different language. It's Dutch. You see their Instagram account. And by the way, Instagram is a great way to promote things. So this is my wife. This is my sister-in-law. And together they write about things in life and they created a book and they are selling it. And then I said to them, I will make a tutorial in English so people can also learn how to create a website with just one product. And that's what we are going to do. So I close this and I scroll down and I save the changes. And now if I go to the website, it still looks ugly. So we're going to make it look better. First, I want to add a few pages. How can we do that? I can go to the customizer over here. Then I want to go to menus and I want to create a menu over here. So I click on it. There's a name for your menu just for your own reference purpose. So I can call this main menu. I can call this whatever I want. Uncle Jim from the hood. I don't know. Jenny from block, but I prefer main menu. Then I want to assign this menu to a location, the primary menu area, which is in this theme over here. Then I click on next. I can add items. So I click on add items. And now I can create new pages. So I select first, I type the home page and click on add. So what kind of pages do I want to have over here? An about page and a contact page. If you want to, you can have a blog page, a portfolio page, whatever. But in this tutorial, I will focus on selling our single product. So I don't need to have blog posts. I can do that. I have tutorials on how to do that. But right now I want to focus on selling this product. That's the only goal of this website 
to get people excited for this product and sell it to them. So if I take a look over here, let me publish it. Then I see home about and contact, but I don't want to have the home page on my website. Why? If I go to apple.com or almost any other website in the world, if I go to Mac and I want to go back to the home page, where is it? You need to click on the logo. And that's what we're also going to do. So I don't need to have the home area. I want to keep it as clean as possible. So I click on page over here, scroll down and I click on remove. Then I go back. I go back right now. It says nothing here. Why? Normally WordPress shows the latest blog posts. That's why it says ready to publish your first post. Get started over here, but I don't want to show my latest blog post. I want to show the homepage. How can I do that? I need to go to the homepage settings, change the homepage display from latest post to a static page. And then we need to select the homepage. I click on publish and I close it. Now we have installed and configured our WordPress website. Let's create our website using Elementor Pro. Now I want to go back to the back end by clicking here. I close all this stuff again. I go to appearance themes. Right now this is the only theme and I want to add a new theme, add new. And then I search for the hello theme from Elementor. Elementor is a page builder. We will use really powerful page builder. Install now and activate it. And if we go to 30 corp dot com forward slash L pro hit enter, you will be redirected to elementor.com. And this is an amazing page builder that we will use in order to create a stunning website and sell our product. So first over here, I can use a free version of Elementor by clicking here, install Elementor. If you did not see that, let me activate it first. And you want to do that manually. You can go to plugins, add new, search for Elementor. And then you can install it over here and activate it. So if I take a look at the uh, plugins, I did not delete the ones I do not use, but I don't use this one and I don't use this one. So I select them both bulk actions, delete, apply. Yes, I'm sure. So I want to keep it clean because then our website keeps as fast as possible. Okay. So now we have our new theme, the hello theme. Wow. Really clean. We have the page builder called Elementor and I want to get rid of this area. Now I want to get Elementor Pro in order to get that. Let's go over here and we go and we, and we can click on pricing. So there are six different plans and don't worry, we're not going to use this one for this website to have a single website where you sell one product and you want to make profit with anyone. You, you just want to sell that product. Definitely go with Elementor Pro Essential. So Elementor Pro for one website and with Elementor Pro, we can create our complete website, the header, the footer, the pages. We can integrate with WooCommerce and with cars, card flows that we're going to use. And it costs $49 per year. So we are selling a book for me. That is three books in order to make back this money and it will help you to make your website better. You can adjust anything. It, you can adjust anything pixel perfect and I will show you how. So in order to get it, we click on buy now. First, I leave my email address that I used to log in here at Elementor. And my first name, last name, I'm from the Netherlands, my company name, my VAT number, and I can pay with credit card or with PayPal. And when I fill in all the details, I click on checkout. I can generate my invoice and I can download Elementor Pro over here. So I download it. I get my confirmation over here. So now I can go to plugins, add new, upload a plugin. And I drag this one over here. I click on install now. I activate the plugin and then I need to link it with my account. 
So I can click here on connect and activate and it can be that the first time you need to log in with your details that you filled in over here. In my case, it went to info at ferdicorpsuk.com. So I click on activate, I can close this and now it is linked and active. So now I can use Elementor Pro on this website. Great. So if we take a look at the website, it doesn't look that appealing yet. And that's what we're going to change. How can we do that? Let me start with the header. We're going to create a beautiful header for a single product web shop. In order to do that, I go to the back end. I go to templates and to the theme builder. I try the new theme builder and I choose a header. We're going to create a header for our website that will appear on every page and that will stick with us no matter where we are in the website. We can choose between a lot of different templates. And if you want to do that, feel free to do that. But I want to show you how to create one from scratch. Close it. So first, before we get started, I want to adjust a few things. I click over here on the settings and I want to give this a title. And I call this one the general header. I publish it and then I can decide where I want to display this. So I can add a condition and the first one is on the entire site, but I can also show it on specific pages. But right now the entire site is perfect. So I click on save and close. And now we can create a header over here and I will show you how. Great. Okay. The second thing I want to do, click over here on those three lines. Then I want to go to the user preferences and I want to change the interface to dark. That's what I prefer. We can keep it light. I prefer to keep it or to make it dark like that. And I want to add editing handles. You can make this panel wider by changing it over here. But I think uh, 300 is okay. Depending on the size of your screen, I'm okay with this. I click on update. So are you ready? Okay, let me talk you through how Elementor is built up. I click over here. What we see over here is this beautiful line and that's a section. So we can create a section. So I click on the plus. If I choose this over here, I have one blue section over here. In that section, in this blue area, I have columns. Right now, I chose only one column. So over here, I see this column. And in those columns, we can have elements like a side logo, a heading, a text editor, a button, a video, a lot of different things. And that's the structure of Elementor. So let me close this. What I can do, I can have this area. That means it is one section with three columns. One, two, three. And in those columns, I can drag things. So maybe I want to have an image over here. When I select this, this blue area again, this is the element, the image element. When I click on this element, I see three areas, the content here. I can change the content so uh, I can choose an image. Then there's the styling of the image. Everything has different options, every element. And then we have advanced, for instance, the margin and the padding and the motion effects. So we can make it. So we can make it go from the left to the right like that. And to take it a step further, if I go to the settings of the section, I hope I don't overwhelm you, but I will show you step by step how it works. We have the styling area. So I can say I want this background to be dark blue. But then I can also have the settings for the column. So this is the first column. I can go to the styling and I can say I want the background to be white. But now you don't see that other background. So now I can go to the advanced area, change the margin. And now you start to see the power of Elementor. So those work all together with each other. If I want to go over here, I can go to the background and I can change it to something else. And then I can play around with the padding and the margin. And in that way, you can create a website pixel perfect. And this is only one element. So I can also drag other elements in the same column or in a new column. 
And again, if I click on it, you see content, style, and advanced and based on the element you use. Click over here on the image. Click over here on the text. You see different settings. And as you see with Elementor Pro, there are a lot of different elements, a price list, a flip box. And if you want to learn about all of them, you can go to youtube.com and search for Ferdy Korpershoek, all elements explained or like this. And there they are. I show all elements of the uh, element, also Elementor Pro. So both the free version and the pro version over here, two and a half hours. And there I'll go deeper into all the stuff. But here I'll just show you what you need in order to create a beautiful website. So I close this. We're still working on the header. So I want to create a new area with two columns. Why at the left, I want to have the logo of my website. And at the right, I want to have my menu. So let's start with the logo. I'm going to do it really simple. I click over here and I search for an image and I drag it here at the left. That's it. Then I select the image. I choose a file and I want to select files from my computer by clicking here. I have a special folder on my desktop writing sisters in law with all the images I will use. So if I want to use an image, the logo, for instance, I can search for the logo. That is this one writing sisters in law. Then there's the logo in white. If I want to, there's the PSD that cannot be uploaded. There's a fave icon. So right now I want to use this logo, but what I want to do now, I want to upload all the logos at once because that will save a lot of time. So if you have all your images at one place, command A, open them. So there they are. Here is my wife. No, it's not my wife. It's a picture of my wife. Oh, that's a good joke. Okay. It's not even my own joke. It's not even that funny. I search for my logo and the PSD file cannot be uploaded and it's totally fine with me. I insert the media. So there it is. I think it is a little bit big. So what I want to do, I want to align it at the left. Then I want to go to the style of this image and I want to change the width, but not in percentage, but in pixels. So let me say, 300. How is that? I think that is amazing. So I will leave it with 300. Then I can play around with the separation area for the columns. So I can make it smaller, but it's really small. So what I can do, I can click over here and I can decide that this area should be 30%. And then this area of course will be 70%. So I have more space for the logo, for the menu and for other stuff in the menu. So that's the first one. I want to click over here, go to the content and I want to link this content to the homepage. So I click on custom URL and then just a forward slash. So no matter where you are in the website, when you click over here, you go to the homepage. Okay. If I want to go back to all the elements, I click over here and then I can search for the navigation bar. I see it already. And if you want to search for something, just type it over here and everything that looks like it will appear. So the nav menu. I release it and there I see it and it starts with a few basic colors. So um, not really impressive in order to make this more impressive. We can adjust it. So I click over here. Okay. I select the main menu our only menu. The layout is horizontal. I can also have it vertical, but uh, that's not what I want. I align it at the right. And if I point over it, it looks like this. A green on the line and a hover with a color stuff. I don't want that. I want it to be a background. So when I hover over it, the whole area becomes green. I only want to change the color. So the animation fades, which is perfectly fine. And this is for the mobile drop down. We'll take a look at that later. I go to the style, and then we can change the typography. Before we continue, let me update it and we created this, this template, and we said this template should be available on the whole website. So if I want to see it, if I just want to see the result of the header, I click on this eye and I click on preview. And if I click on the link, then I go to the homepage. And as I said, you see it on the homepage now, writing sisters in law. And there are quite a few things I want to change, uh, but step by step, we will change them one by one. So first is this color. This is not the color I want to use in my website. So how can I change that? I click over here 
I can go to the menu then I can go to the style. And when I hover over it, I see this green color. So I can say, I want to uh, use this color for instance. And this is exactly what I want, but what I prefer to do, you see this icon over here, we can choose primary color. So colors that we chose one time. And when we choose one of those colors, it will automatically become the primary color. But when we use all those colors in the whole website and we change the primary color, all the colors in the website will be changed at the same time. So we don't need to do everything one by one. What do I mean? Let me update it. If I click over here and I go to the site settings and then I go to the global colors, then this color is the primary color. I selected this color. So right now it looks like that. But if I change the primary color to this one, look at this. So that means if I select this primary color of a lot of place on a lot of places in the website and I change it over here, it will be changed on all those places and that will save you a lot of time. So there's also the accent and I want to use the same color. I want to change the secondary color to a little bit darker color and the text color actually the same and it can be even darker. C3, 3, 3C, <laughs> yeah. So those are the two colors I will use. I will keep it a basic website just focused on making sales because this book is amazing, of course. And I hope the thing you sell is also amazing. Then we can go to the global fonts. And that works the same as with the colors. So I like to use Railway as primary, Railway. And that's what you'll see in the header, it will change. All the titles I want it to be real way and all the colors I want it to be open sans. Also over here, open sans. And then the accent color, open sans. Update. Okay, then I close it and I go back to the editing area of Elementor over here. So it looks like that. Then the next thing I want to do, I want to take a look over here and then I want to go to the site settings and I want to go to the layout. So how wide is this website? If I would make it really narrow, you'll see that the width of the website will change. So I like to say 1140, I think that's perfect. And the widget space, 20 is also perfect. Update. Close. Okay, then I want to go back to the dashboard. From the dashboard, I want to go to the website. Let me close this for now. And what I want to see, I want to see a nice icon over here. Because when I go to Verdi Corp, Verdi Corp, and I go to apple.com, what I see over here at the top is this icon. So I can see easily where I need to go. And here I see a stupid world. But the world is not stupid. So I need to change this because if the world is not stupid, but it seems through this icon that the world is stupid, then I want to change that. So that's what we're, we're going to do. Okay. Weird talk. I go to the customizer by Apple and I go to the site identity and we can select the logo of our website. This one. And I skip the cropping and I scroll down and I want to go to the site icon. I select it and I need to find it. And here it is. And it is in the color of my website because I like to maintain the style. I skip the cropping and look at this, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Publish. Close it. So, so far, so good. If I click over here. I see I go to the about page. If I click over here, I go to the contact page. I click over here and I go to the home page and I want to edit this header again. How can I do that? I hover over Elementor and I want to edit the general header by clicking here. So I click over here again. I go to the style and over here at typography, I click here. It is railway, which is perfectly fine in my opinion. 
I click on transform and I want to make it uppercase like that. And I'm happy with the color because it's chosen over here. Uh, dark color, I like it. I don't like it when it is too light. So I select this one. Perfect. When I hover over it, what do I want to happen? Well, by default, this will happen. Not by default, it's already chosen over here. But actually, that's what I like. So I will leave it as that is. Maybe bring this a little bit to the right. Give it a little bit more space. Update. And when I'm on a certain page, I want it to hi be highlighted. So I can go to active. I can change the same, change it to the same colors. So what we will see now, if I open this over here and I go to the about page, it will say stated color. So I see wherever I am in the website on which page I am. And that's what I like. So that's the active area. And if I would go to the contact page and that page is active. So my wife and sister-in-law are really active on Instagram. So I want to add an area where they can go to Instagram that can be linked over here. How to do that? I click over here and I search for an icon. And I see social icons over here. So I drag it here to the right, but I cannot do that only on top or below. So I drag it below. I remove two of the icons. I click on Facebook. I click on the icon. And then I search for Instagram. I insert it. So there it is. Beautiful. I need to find the link again of Instagram and then writing sisters in law. If you want to support them, you can do that. Even though it is in Dutch. So it's up to you if you want to support my wife and my sister in law. And right now it shows the official color. And I leave it with that for now. The shape is rounded, square, or a circle. I think rounded is fine. And the columns, I only need one column, so that's okay. I can uh, align it to the right, and then I go to the style, and I change the official colors to the custom ones. And the primar primary color is this one, and the secondary color is this one, or better, Primary color does not exist, so I will make it transparent. And the secondary color is the secondary color, like that. The same color as this one. Okay, but what I don't like is that those are on top of each other. How can I bring them next to each other? Well, I click over here. I go to advanced, close this, and I scroll down to positioning. And I change the width from default to inline. Look at this. Now it's not over the whole width, but it's just this area. So inline means that it is as big as the space it needs. So not the whole width. The same thing I want to do over here. And now it becomes interesting because if I go to advanced, I scroll down positioning, and I bring it to inline. Now they can be stacked next to each other instead of on top of each other. So I don't know if the word stack is in the right place at that moment. So, so far so good. Now I go to the settings over here and I go to the columns. Horizontal alignment is in the center. So it's totally in the center of the width of this area. So if I change the horizontal alignment to the end, oh, now we're getting somewhere. If I hover over here, it looks like that. It looks like that. And here, nothing happens. So I want to adjust it a little bit further. By clicking here, I go to the style. The custom colors are okay. But if I hover over it, I want to change it to this color with this color. Like that. I want to go to the style of the social media icon because I think it should be a little bit uh, smaller. Let's say 24. Then we can increase the padding until I think it's perfect. Okay. So if I update it, and I click over here, so I go to the website, it looks like this. Uh, mm, I don't like it. 
what I can do, I can make this a little bit bigger so it will, will align better. And if I make the website bigger, command plus, I can see it a bit better. So, um, okay, what I can do, and that's what I like about Elementor, that pixel perfect stuff. I can go to the style of the navigation. And I can increase the padding. This horizontal. There's also a vertical. So if I would make it really big, it will look like this. So now I can just decrease it until I think they align perfectly. And I think that's it. Nice. But the most important thing for this website is to sell this book. So how can I grab some attention for people to buy this book? Well, we need a call to action through a button. So I click over here, I search for button and I want to drag it between it, but it, so I can drag it over here or here. If you can drag it between it, what you can do, you can go to the navigator over here and then you see the nav menu over here. And then you see the social icons and then you can drag this in between. Okay. Then this selected this button, I go to advanced and I go to positioning and I will change it of course to inline. Oh, no, it's getting better and better. So first I go to the content to change the title because right now it says click here. Well, why would people click here? They don't know what it is. So I want to be really clear by our book. I can link it, but I will link it later because right now I don't have the link to the page where people can buy it yet. And I want to style this in a way that it looks similar. So the typography, I want it to be the same, which is a real way. What is the height over here or the size? It's not there, so I need to do it manually so I can be sure it is the same. 16. So also over here, 16, transform, uppercase, and I think it says 600 over here. So if I go to the boldness or the weight of this title, I want to make it the same. Okay, then if I hover over here, it's bigger than this one. So I need to go, let me see to the padding, uncheck it, and now I can adjust the padding pixel perfect. 16, also 16. So let me see. Yes, it aligns perfectly. So now I need to have some more space at the left and at the right. So at 50% uh, should be space over here and 50% over here. So I think that's perfect. So what I mean is the space between those things should be perfectly divided by 50%. And I think that's the case right now. So it looks as if it's one button that's in the menu integrated. It's, it's one menu instead. It's a little bit different. So, and the right side, of course, also 15. So about contact. And this one. So if I hover over here, I want to change a few things. How can we do that over here? Button style hover. I want to uh, make the background white and the text color, the primary color like this. And I want to have a border of one pixel. But that has nothing to do with the hover. So what I need to do if I go if I go to hover, I see the border. Let me make it two. But it means that it does not fit anymore. So what I need to do also, I need to go to the margin or the padding over here and decrease it by two. So now it's still aligned. Do you get it? I hope you get it. I click over here. Yes, and there is a small rounding also over here. Uh, how can I get rid of it? I 
click over here, border radius, uncheck it, make it zero. So it will, will become a square like that. So it gets some extra attention when people click on it or hover over it. It looks like that. And since you know what, I will also remove the square over here. So um, click over here, border radius zero. Perfect. Update. So we have our logo with about contact by our ebook and social media. And if I scroll down, you see it does not go with us. So how can I make this header sticky? By clicking here and go to advanced, close this. I go to the motion effects, really simple, sticky on top. Update, refresh, and now when I scroll, you see it sticks with us. I'm happy. I click over here. This looks great. So how can we make this mobile friendly? We can click over here, responsive mode, and then we see it looks like this on a mobile. But keep in mind, people go to this website and when I see this, in my opinion, it just looks awful. So we want to make it as easy as possible for people to buy this book. How can we do that? Well, let me go back to the normal view. I want to duplicate this area before I do that. One more thing, click over here. Go to style, background type and make the background white. That's it, since it's sticky. And we scroll down, we want to have a solid white background. Now I want to duplicate it. And then I want to do a few tricks, no tricks, just things you can do. Click on this section, go to advanced, close this, go to the responsive area. And now we can say that we hide this on a mobile. Then over here, the second one, advanced, go to responsive. We can hide this on a desktop and on a tablet. So this is the version for the desktop and the tablet and this one for the mobile. So right now this one is grayed out, but if I switch it, this one is grayed out. In order to make it a little bit easier to follow in the navigation, we have two section, sections over here. I can say header, desktop, header, mobile. Okay. So I want to adjust it a bit. What we can do, we can drag everything in one column because right now we have two columns. I'd only need one. So I drag, drag this over here and I drag this over here. Then I hover over here and I remove this column. So there's only one column right now. Then I can go back to the navigator if I want to. And I like to see the button first by the book, then the navigation menu, and then the social media icon. So you don't see it all in one line or in one row. I want that in order to do that. I click on the navigation menu and then I scroll down and at the mobile drop down, I click on full width. I select it. So now everything is in one row, but not aligned perfectly. So I go to the settings of the column. I go to the horizontal alignment and I change it to the center. Okay. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. And this is also what I like. So I need to go to this one. And then over here, I can increase the mar margin and padding. I can uncheck this. And I can make sure there's enough space between the button and the navigation menu as there is over here. So at the right, I decrease it to zero. And at the left, I increase it a bit more like this. Update. So if I click over here and I preview this, go to the home page, it looks like this on a desktop. And if I make the screen smaller, I forgot one more th one thing. And that is over here, align it in the center. 
So let me try it again. Okay, this is how it will uh, look on the mobile. And right now you don't see it because we have this bar over here, but there's uh, uh, enough space over here. And if you want to increase the space a little bit, which I can imagine, if I cannot select this, yes, if I cannot select it, I can always go to the navigator, select the header of the mobile, and then I go to padding, top, increase this area, 16, update. And now if I make the screen smaller again, you see there's more space. So we can adjust everything pixel perfect. We can adjust those colors also. By the way, <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. This is how I make websites, trial and error. Also a bit space over here. Yeah, or everywhere seven. Because if I hover, then it's in the center. Okay. Then I go to the style. And over here at the toggle, toggle, I could change the colors to something else and to white and or this one. I can make it bigger. So, you know what? Let's do that. And then I go to this place, make it the zero. Okay, let's let's just do it. I go to the toggle and then make it bigger. Yes, like that. Then I can go to advanced at the left seven, at the right seven. But I don't like it, so what I can do. I can go to history and I change the background color. So um, I click over here and I'm back. So that's how you can do that with the, the history area. But what I can do when I hover over it, it can become a different color because right now it's a little bit boring. So when I hover over it, then with everything, here, here, here. Yes. So I saw something else when it is in tablet view. Look at this. Here it changes already to this menu. If I measure this, Shift Command 4 on a Mac, I see it's 1024. So we can change the break breaking point area. And since we have a small menu, it doesn't have to be um okay wait wait i click over here i go to the tablet view okay now i select this area and then i go to content and then the breaking point should be for a mobile yes so as long as you watch this on a tablet you'll still still see the normal menu so i update it I take a look I make it smaller, 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 smaller. Great, 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 great. Yeah, this is what I want. I hope you start to see why I like Elementor so much because yes, it's more work, but we have so much more flexibility to create the website we have in mind. And we're only talking about the header yet. I take a look again at what I see. Look at this. When I make the screen smaller on the tablet, for instance, this header does not stay, or this logo does not stay um, in the center vertically. So in order to achieve that, I click over, no, 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 I not, do not click over here. I click over here on the settings of the, the column and then the vertical alignment, I say middle. Look at this. You see a small change and now I can show you the result. This will automatically, yeah, did you see that? So now if I make it smaller, become smaller like that. So it doesn't go up. So it stays vertically in the middle and that's what I want. So I'm excited. I hope you are too. And what I want to do now, I want to take a look at the homepage. So I click over here. Right now we will create the homepage. If you can't wait to create your product and all that stuff we're going to do later in the tutorial, then you can skip this part. Right now I'll show you how to create a beautiful homepage for your one product website. I want to adjust this page and in order to do that, we need to click on edit page. 
Awesome. And then I click on edit with Elementor. Still having fun? I hope so. Feel free to like this video if you like it and subscribe for more upcoming WordPress, Elementor Pro, web design, web shop related tutorials. And if you have a suggestion for a new video, let me know. I do my best to make a lot of tutorials. So what I want to do, I click over here. I hide the title and then page layout. I make it Elementor full width. This is for every page I make with Elementor. And when you do that, it will be saved automatically. And then I go to the elements. And since we use Elementor Pro, we have a lot of extra elements. You don't have that with the free version. And I want to make use of a slide. So I search for the slide. And I know it's only for one column. So I can just drag it over here and it will automatically create a section around it. Awesome. So I click on the first slide and I can have an image in the background or yeah, an image in the slide. I choose this one and I can have a call to action. Let me go to the first slide. This is it. And then slides up, slide heading one with a text and a call to action. You can do that if you want to buy our book, something like that. Um, it's up to you. You can have a background overlay so it becomes a little bit darker. You can have the Ken Burns effect so it moves a little bit and you can change the, the overlay color. So there are a lot of possibilities. You can uh, mix the color with a certain blend code so it looks different. I think it is amazing, but I want to use it for something else. So I go to content, remove all the content. I just want to show it for the images. That's it. Like that. Then I go to the second one and then I add a second image, this one. And then again, Ken Burns. Um, yeah, I don't want to get, I want to get rid of the overlay. So item two. And I want to get rid of the title, the text and the call to action. If you remove something and you keep something else, you see it will stay there. So that's really nice. You can say, I only want to show a title. Welcome on this website. Please never say that on your website. That's really 1998. Welcome on this website with a, a bar that was floating like this. It was the coolest HTML trick there was at the time. And I use it on every website, but please don't do that anymore. Welcome on this website. No. And then we can do this one, but I need to tell you when you want to show this on a mobile, it can be. That is not visible. So when you use images like these, make sure that the person or the thing you want to show is in the center. I'll show you in a minute how it will look on a mobile. So we can also change the direction so you can zoom out. I prefer one direction over Justin Bieber. Although Justin Bieber is doing pretty great things the latest years, my opinion. What's your opinion? No, let's stick with WordPress. So beautiful ladies. Um, we can change the height, but what I prefer, since we do not have a call to action over here, I want to show something else over here. If, if this whole page is like this and there's no call to action only here, then I don't know, personal preference. So let's say, uh, let's make this 450 and let's see what will happen. Slider options. Do we want to have arrows and dots over here? You, see, you can see dots there red or black at this moment. So you don't see them that well, but if we have a light background, wait a minute, wait a minute, they're hardly visible. You can change it. I can also say only arrows. So you see the arrows, but you don't see the dots auto play. So should it automatically start playing pause and hover? That means uh, when the website is live and you hover over it, it should pause. No pause on interaction. No auto play speed. So right now, every five seconds, a new image will appear. I want to change it to three and a half infinite loop. So after the latest picture, it goes back. The transition of the slide should be a thousand. So one second and fade. But with fade, I would say 500. Let me see how that looks. My computer thinks it's a rocket and it needs to uh, take off because it starts uh, making noises, but that's uh, no problem. Okay. Five seconds is great. 5,000. 
milliseconds. Okay. Awesome. Then I want to go to the settings of the column. I go to advanced and then over here, I uncheck this and I uncheck the padding. And now there are no spaces anymore. So people go to this website and this is what they will see. Okay, let's have a click over here. Go to slide one, content, about Anna and Paula. But keep in mind, this is um, a different call to action to the about page than the buy our book. And our goal is to, to let people buy the book. So I can also, it can also be a distraction to people. So I leave it empty. I update it and I want to take a look. So I click over here and uh, what I see, it's not fully full width. So uh, in order to fix that, I go to the settings of the section. Right now I see the content width is boxed. If I say full width, then it will adjust to the width of the complete website like this. And that is what I prefer. Check the images if they are being shown correct, because right now you, you, yeah, it's on the edge. I think it's okay. And then we can take a look over here. How does it look on a smartphone? This looks fine. This also looks fine. And this also looks fine. So um, I can use all the images. And as you see, this area sticks with us and that's what I do not want. So what I can do, hey, that's a great moment to show you what else you can do. I'm editing the homepage right now, but what I can do, I can hover over here and I can change to editing the header. Nice. So then I go to the mobile version by clicking here. And now over here, I can select the section, go to advanced and go to motion effects. Sorry. Yeah. And then say none. So on the mobile, it will not stick with us. Great. So I go back to the, uh, to the homepage and I edit the homepage by clicking on edit with Elementor. And now if I take a look, it doesn't scroll with us, which is better in my opinion. Okay. The second part over here, new area one column and I want to start with a heading and I say raw stories, honest, raw and honest stories is what we love to write about. I don't know if this is correct English. I'm sorry if it's not. So I go to the HTML tag, it's H2, that's perfect. I want to go to the, okay, and I want to change the color. So I go to the style, text color, change it to the secondary color. I want to make it a little bit smaller. Like that. Okay, then I want to write a text. So I drag the text editor over here. And then I want to go to the section settings, it is boxed and I want to change the width, let's say to 700. Then I want to go to advanced, uncheck this area and at the top, I want to create some space on the top, 40, copy it and at the bottom, 40. So I think that looks great. Now I can type this text and then I will be back with you. My text, I translated it, but it can be that it is not translated that well. I use Grammarly. I hope they will do a great job. It seems to be the case. By the way, I have a tutorial about this. So I hope they have fixed it a little bit for me, but I, I have it. Uh, if you search for YouTube or search for Grammar, really tutorial. The second one. 
Um, I can click over here, go to advanced, uncheck the padding and the margin and at the bottom, I can bring this a little bit closer. Okay, so it's a little bit smaller than the width of the website and it has some space above and below it. I like to increase it even more. 50, 50. Okay. The next area, I want to create an image. So I create a section and then I can go to the style background and I grab an image. I grab this image import and I go to the layout to the height minimum height I go to let me see style again and then at position it's okay size cover and then I go to the overlay over here and I grab our color like that and then I can increase it or decrease it then I can duplicate this area. I can drag it over here. I can go to the settings again, layout, boxed, make it 700 again, just like the text above. I click over here. I go to the style. I change the text to white. If I have the ID, it's not readable. I can go to the background style background overlay and see oh wait see if i can make it do something like this with it or what you can do click over here settings of the column style background make it black and then decrease it a little bit until you think hey now it's readable then we can go to the advanced area and increase the padding a bit. And I like to keep you some space. So let's say 25 to have uh, the 50% the of those sizes of 50 over here. And then over here also 50, 50. Then I want to have a button over here to the about page. So if I type about, I can change the text more about us. And this time, you know what? I'm okay with the, with the style. I can go to the typography, make it real way, uppercase. And then when I hover over it or someone else, make the text color, this and then this color. Okay. My homepage is um, becoming better and better. And now I want to have a testimonial about it, about the book. So I click over here. I want to have two columns. And in the left one, I drag an image. I click over here. And I want to grab this image of the book. I insert the media. You know what? I'll use. Let me see. I think uh, this one is better. Yes. Then copy. Right mouse click. Paste. That's how easy it is to maintain the style. Then, of course, at the column, I want to increase the padding quite a lot. I want to have a testimonial over here from someone who read the book. Something like that. I changed the name for the uh, sake of the, um, privacy. So what I see, there's a lot of space over here. And what I also see, I want to have a call to action over here. So what I can do, I can edit the header. Right mouse click, copy, edit the page. and paste it. That is how easy it is. And this time I do not say buy our book, but I say more information. Okay. What else we'll do? I will just keep on increasing the margin. So 
so it it, uh, it just looks better like this okay for me that's the home page of course you can do whatever you want to do what you also can do click over here go to the background and change the attachment to fixed and then it looks like that i think that is nice so how does it look on a smartphone? I think there can be a bit more padding. Also here. Let me see. Um, what is wise? Maybe 15 and then 15. And the book in this area, of course, should have less <laughs> padding. I love this, man. You can, you can adjust everything for every device. So um, this looks great on all devices. So we made a header and we made home page the moment is there we're going to create the product we want to sell on this website we will use a free plugin called woocommerce a great plugin to sell products on the internet and then the second plugin we will use a free version is called card flows that will help you to display your product in a beautiful way so it will convert better because that's what we all want we want to sell the products or services we offer on our website so let's get started with that now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's sell our book. How can we do that? I go to the back end to plugins at new. And I search for WooCommerce. I click on install now. It's a free program that can help you to sell products on the internet. Activate it. Then you can fill in your details if you want to. So I click on continue. No thanks. I don't want to send my details stuff to them. Okay, I am into education through books. Physical products. Continue. I don't have, I have one product. I don't want to tell them all this information. I turn this off. I use already the, the hello theme. I will continue to do that. So now we set up WooCommerce and we can create a product. Let me go to the dashboard. Because now I can uncheck this again. So we keep it clean. So since we have WooCommerce and products over here, I can hover over new and create a new product. This is the one product, the single product you're going to sell on your website. So the name of the book my sister-in-law and my wife are selling is called translated from Dutch. You don't talk about that. Something like that. Maybe it's translated totally the wrong way. It's It means things should normally would not talk about that in one sentence like you should not talk about that something like that here we can give a long description and here we can give a short description but we don't need those because we're going to create a landing page around our product so we will use WooCommerce and we will use card flows it's a simple product maybe it's a variable product so you want to have one product with more options if you want to learn how to work with that go to youtube and search for WooCommerce variable product and if you see a different video than mine you don't but if you see one that's different this one for instance say 30 after that because imagine you sh you should watch a different tutorial than mine it, it man it would it would be crazy so yeah that simple product the price um let's sell this for 19.95 and there is no sale. If there is one, you can schedule it for a certain uh, time. Then inventory. Do you want to have uh, things in stock? Well, first, the SKU number. Every product has a number. You can also have letters. 
In this case, it's an ISBN number for a book. Every book has a number and this is a number. So when people search on this on Google, it can be that our book will pop up. I want to manage the stock. My wife bought 200 books and she will sell them. And do we allow back orders? That means that when you're out of stock, people can still buy, but allow others. I just allow it so people can always buy it. It's never out of stock, but I want to give myself a threshold of 40. So if there are only 40 books left, 160 are sold, I want to get a notification. You can decide that only one can be sold per time, but I want to give people the opportunity to buy more than one. And then we'll talk about shipping later. Actually, it's okay. If you want to, you can go to product categories and add books. It's actually not necessary since we only so sell one product, but what we do need is a product image. So I can set it and I already uploaded all the images of my website. So I choose a square one. Let me see. Or this one set as a product image and we can if we want to add multiple images. But again, we're not going to use it because we will use card flows for that. So I publish my product and I can view my product by clicking here. And now you see the default WooCommerce style. So when people would click here, they would go over here. Okay. Then they can add it to the cart. They can view the cart. They can proceed to the checkout and they can fill in the information and pay and get it. But I want to make it smoother. I want the transition of people buying, or I, I don't mean the transition. I want the whole process of people buying this book to be really easy. So that's why I will use card flows. In order to get card flows, you can go to ferdicorp.com forward slash card flows, hit enter. And card flows helps you to create a landing page or a funnel within WordPress. Well, we're going to start with the free version and we're going to end with the free version. But after the end, I'll show you how to use the paid version so you can do a few more things, make it look a little bit better. And if I, again, if I think about how much we can make selling these books, I think this is a great investment. So if I go to the pricing, you can have it for $239 per year. And then you can have it for 30 websites. That is amazing. Or you buy it once for a thousand dollars and you can have it for the rest of your life for 30 websites. Well, this is crazy. If you take a look at click funnels, it's like uh, card flows, but then without WordPress on its own platform, you pay $97 per month for it. And that's only the, the, the lowest product with the least amount of options. After one year, you already paid $1,200 and this is $999 for the rest of your life. So again, we're going to work with free, free version first. first. <laughs> so I go to the back end to plugins at new. And then I search for card flows install now already 200,000 installations of the free version. So it's a really popular plugin and it has really nice features for a free plugin. And that's why I want to start with those options, the free options. I skip the setup and I want to go to card flows, flows, and I want to create a flow. So normally we have funnels. Right now we have flows. So I create a new flow and that flow has one goal to sell the book. So I start from scratch or you can choose to start with a certain template. Well, I start from scratch and I call this one, you don't talk about that design your flow. Okay. Let me explain it to you by default. There are three pages. The first page is a landing page on the landing page. People can leave their name and email address. It's like an opt-in. And then when we have, when we have their email address, we can connect it with our email address provider, like ConvertKit or MailChimp or something else active campaign. And then we can send them automated emails. We can set it up all in a way that is automatic but I don't want to collect email addresses. I want to make sales. So I will get rid of this delete. So we have two steps in this landing space in, the, in this uh, flow. The first one, the checkout. So the goal is that when people click on buy our book, by the way, we need to 
change this background. And when people buy our book, they go to our landing page. So that's this checkout. So on this page, when they click over here, they can immediately check out within without filling, without going to three different pages, update the card, all the stuff. We want it to be a smooth process. So that's the checkout page. What I can do, I can edit this page and then I go to products, the second tab, and I want to add a product and I search for the product you, the only product we have, and then I add that product. We can apply a discount, but I, uh, I don't do that. We don't have coupons, that's for the pro version, but I want to save the settings. Then I go to the settings, general, and I change the step title to you don't talk about that checkout, copy, paste the slug, save the settings and by default it will create a beautiful slug over here. So if I go back to flows, you don't talk about that and then this one over here at the settings general, it looks like that. I want to get rid of the this area. You don't talk about that. So I save it again. Go back to flows. Also here, you don't talk about that. Save it. Okay. So that looks better. So we go to the checkout page. We already assigned the product. So now when we are going to edit this with Elementor, we get a blank canvas. So the first thing I want to add, I scroll down all the way and then I see card flows and there's one option over here on this page, the checkout form, which is from WooCommerce. So WooCommerce and card flows are integrated and that makes it look like this. It's orange. That's the default color for card flows. So I can go to the style and I can change the primary color to this one. So that looks better in the style of our website. So people can leave their first name, last name, company name, country, street address, phone, email address, additional information, and then they can fill in a coupon code if there is one and people can pay with a payment provider. And I will show you later how you can use Stripe for that. So I update it. I want to tell you that when you upgrade to the pro version, you can change all the stuff over here. So you can decide that the first name should be a field that is 100% uh, white instead of 50%. You can get rid of the last name of the company. You can make it a really short and beautiful form. You can get rid of this. You can get rid of this because if there's no coupon code, there are people that are going to search on the internet for coupon codes and then they get distracted and they do not buy the thing you promote. But right now we can not get rid of it. We can however change the style over here of the heading. So this one, for instance, so if I would make this purple, that's sometimes for me a way to see what I'm changing over here, but I bring it back or I use the secondary color and we have the input fields, style floating labels. That's for the pro version, but we can change the typography. We can change the label colors, all that stuff. We can change the buttons, colors, Payment section, the field validation and error when there goes something wrong, which color should it have? I'm totally fine with everything. So I update it, but I want to tell more about the book because this is a landing page. So I need to tell some information about the book. So I decided to do it like this. Click on the plus, click on the plus again, and I choose two columns. The first one will be an image. Click over here and I choose this one or this one insert. And then over here at the right, I want to have a text. We can say you don't talk about that. And I can duplicate it over here. I can say pre order the book now. Go to the style, make it a little bit smaller. And then at advanced, I can uncheck this and bring the top to a minus, minus 10. I go back to all the elements and I drag the text 
area over here. And if I go to the navigator, I can make sure the text editor is below the heading. Yes, and then I can type a text. Right now, I will leave it with this. So there's a text about our book with a nice image, title, pre-order the book now. And then I want to click on the plus, another area with three columns. And this time I click over here, I go to the style. I want to make the background the primary color. Then I want to use the text editor. And here I want to say published in October. 2021. Come on, Grammarly, help me. Published in October 2021, but it doesn't look appealing. So what I can do, I can go to advanced to background and I want to make this background white like this, but it looks a little bit odd. So I go to the content. I'm happy with that. I go to the style. I bring it to the center. Text color is fine. I can make it a little bit bigger. Eighteen. Okay, now I want to go to advanced. Uncheck this. Uncheck this. And turn it all back on. And then at padding, I want to increase it. Let's say with twenty. Okay, then I want to copy this. And again, and I remove this. And I remove this. Over here, I say something else. Paperback, paperback, shift enter, ESBN, shift enter. And I fill in the ESBN number, the, the number of the book. Then at the right area, I want to say 19.95x shipping costs. Shift enter. Okay. And then over here, go to advanced and decrease it until it fits. Okay. Well, then I want to do something else because right now it, there's a, a border over here and I don't want that. So I update it and it has everything to do with the template of card flow. So I go to the settings over here, page layout, card flows boxed. I want to use the default one and I want to get rid of the title and now over here i like to say at the width box 800 over here i also would like to say the width 800 and then over here i would like to say full width update and if i click over here i can see how that will look so this goes over the whole width of the website and this one 800 wide. Then of course over here, I can go to the column, vertical, middle, go over here and increase this area. So I've been playing around with this 34 everywhere at the text editor and then the background white, but at the second one, seven, at the third one, this let's say zero everywhere or nothing also here nothing copy paste style paste style because i think there's a better way just go to this area the column then at style background make it white and then margin 10 okay right mouse click copy paste style and paste style. So over here, make sure this is in the middle and this is at the center. And then again, copy, paste it and paste it. So even while I'm making tutorials, I keep on learning how to do things better. Okay. And this looks like this update. Then I want to go to this area. So I go to flows. 
click over here. And view this area and I want to see the link. So this is the link I want people to go to in order to check out. So um, I copy this and what I can do, I can now go to the homepage over here, edit the general header. I want to click here and send it to you. To the checkout, copy this, update. I want to go to the mobile version and also there, of course, adjust the link, update, close it. Okay, I go again to the checkout because I want to see how it looks on a mobile device since uh, these days a lot of people shop on their mobile. First, I want to change a few more things over here. Actually, I want to use a canvas. So let me see if I can use a template for page builders. Yes, that's better because then I don't see the header and the footer because I want this to be a landing page. I don't want people, people to go to a different page. So I go to the, the upper section, advanced, and check this. And at the top, I want to increase it a bit. Create a little bit more space, let's say 40 or 60, and also below 60. Then this area is fine. Then this area, advanced, 60, 60, and uh, sorry, not here, but at um, over here, 60, 60. What I see over here, since we use this template for page builders, we need to adjust all the settings over here because right now those fonts are not as I want them to be. No problem. I click over here. I go to the style and I need to go through everything and change this into a real way. A look at billing details over here. You see that will change. Then to the input fields, typography is open sans now that is back to normal then over here payment section let me see let me go to all the places okay the typography by default should be open sans and then yes this is also normal so in that way it can be fixed update So if I would go to the website and I click over here, I go to the landing page and I can buy the book or I can pre-order. So I want to know how it looks on the mobile. So that's what I will do now. I click over here and then I think there should be less space over here. So I think this is fine. This is fine. Over here, maybe 60 at the top, 60 at the bottom, a little bit more space over here. It looks weird. So let's say 40 or keep it as this, no, 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 a little bit more. Same amount over here. So 10 and 10. Again, I love the pixel perfect work over here. Uncheck this, it's perfect like this. I personally prefer to remove a few things, but then we need to have the pro version. I will talk about it later. I want to show you what's possible with the free version. Okay, okay, there are quite a few things we need to do, but at the other hand, we're, we're getting closer and closer to the end result. So, what I want to do, I want to create a few pages to say we need to agree with the terms of service. So if I go to new page and I say terms of service and I publish it, okay, I can go back. I can hover over new page and go to privacy policy, publish, publish. 
Okay. Then I go to the website. Let me close this and this, and I go to the customizer. And since we use WooCommerce, we have extra settings for WooCommerce over here. So we can go to the checkout, for instance, and change a few things. Company name hidden. If you only sell to people that do not have a business. The second line in the address, I don't like it. Highlight required fields with an asterisk. Okay. And then the privacy policy page. Terms and conditions. Terms of service. And you can have a text over here. You can change that. And you can also change this text. And that those text areas over here will be shown over here. So um, really important. Publish. Close it. So I think this looks so much better than the default WooCommerce area. Some information and then we can leave our details. And then we can need to agree to the terms of service, terms and conditions. And if you click over here, you will see them in a new tab. So you need to fill those in. And if I make it smaller, doing as if I'm on a mobile, it looks great. People can buy things. Okay. Are right, guys still having fun? I hope so. We're getting further and further into the tutorial and the result is more and more like the end result we want to have. So what we will do now, we will implement a payment provider called Stripe. Stripe is accessible from all over the world. People can pay with Stripe. And if you have a Stripe account, you can let people also pay with local payment providers because Stripe does all the hard work for us. They have all the connections with everything in the world and they can help you to get payments from your website. When you get the payments from your website, they will be transferred to your own bank account automatically. It's not available in all countries in the world to apply for it. So in certain countries in the world, you cannot apply for Stripe account. Let me show you a list with all the countries that are currently supported by Stripe. But when you have a Stripe account, you can accept payments from all over the world. So if your country is not on the list, there are workarounds, but this video is not talking about that. I'm from the Netherlands and I will show you how I got my Stripe account activated. And I will also show you how you can use it with WooCommerce. So the first thing we need to do, we need to go to Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E.com. And it says the new standard in online payments. Well, it is. You can start now. So I click there and I can create a Stripe account over here. My email is info at ferdycorpershook.nl. My full name is Ferdy Corpershook. I create a password. I confirm my password and then I click on create account. And there I am. So now I need to configure a few things. Welcome Ferdy. Follow these steps to get started. Find the right integration for your business. Browse our docs. Okay, no, I will skip that. I need to verify my email. So I go to my Gmail account. There it is, Stripe. Verify email to start. I click on verify email address. I need to fill in my password. Continue. I'm not a robot. Okay, I want to activate my Stripe account, so I click over here. Before starting the process, payments tell us a few details about you and the products or services you're selling. Start now. I'm from the Netherlands. My business website is https 30 corpershookcom Business description. I sell digital products. Let's see other digital goods. Describe what you want to sell. I I sell a course where I teach people how to make money online through affiliate marketing. What kind of business? Well, this is Dutch. It is a cooperation. The name of my company is Ferdy and Anna Media. So you need to fill in the, the details of your business over here. I scroll down. My legal name is Ferdinand. Corpus Hook. Do you own more than 
25% of the business. Yes. What percentage do I own? 50. Job title, I am CEO. My birthday. This is optional, so I leave that again. Address. My company name again, 30 and Anna Media. Support phone number. And then my bank details. How to make use of the two step thing? Go to the text messages. I confirm my phone number. I fill in the code I receive on my phone. I want to copy this code somewhere on my phone. Okay, done that. Submit application. Right now it's being reviewed. Thanks for submitting. We're verifying your details, which should take just a few moments. This is where you can see how much you can or you have earned. So I got an email. Thank you for submitting. They will review everything. And they said to me, unfortunately, we were unable to verify, verify some of your personal information. So I needed to fill in some more things, proof of my identity. So I sent an image of my passport and proof of my home address. Well, what I needed to do, I used a bank statement with my complete name on it. So I need to get it. You need to get a file that shows your complete name. It can be from a bank, utility bill, bank statement, a letter from a government institution, as long as it has your complete name. So I found the document, I uploaded it, and then I got access. So right now my Stripe account is active. I'm really happy. And over here, I want to integrate this with our website. How can I do that? Scroll up and down four times. Yes, then you go to the back end. Then we go to plugins, add new. And we search for WooCommerce Stripe. We need to search for something with the word gateway. WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. I don't know why it looks like this because I really like WooCommerce. So um, I activate it. And then I want to go to WooCommerce Settings. I go to Payments. And of course, I want to select Stripe Credit Card. And you see there are more Stripe things over here ideal for the netherlands really nice i turn this one off because i don't want to have the direct bank transfer option but i want to go for stripe so i turn it on i scroll down and i save the changes and now i need to connect stripe it says over here you need to set up your stripe account key so that's what we will do we go to stripe manage okay so let's start with the beginning i want to enable this payment gateway we enable it the title is credit card and I like to use Stripe because that gives people some trust because Stripe is known worldwide as a payment provider. And then the description, pay with your credit card via Stripe. Okay. I set up or link an existing Stripe account. I can do that or I go to Stripe and I go to view test data. So I turn this on. Because I want to test it first before we're going to try a lot of things. Then I go to developers, knowing that the test mode is on. So I go to developers and then to API keys. Okay. Here is my publishable key. If you don't have it yet, I can create it over here. But um, I already have one. So I need to grab the publishable key. I click and then I copy it. And the publishable key needs to be pasted over here. But this one is live. I want to enable the test mode first. And I paste the publishable key from the test, which is over here. And you see over here in the key, it is te a test. Then the test key, review it, leave my password, copy it. Then I want to paste it. Then I scroll down a bit and I need to go to the webhooks. So at Stripe, we need to go to the webhooks below. I have a lot of them already. I click on add endpoint. Again, this is all with the test account. So I go over here. I copy this link, which you see at webhook endpoints. That one, we need to 
paste it and that way we create a connection. At the description I can say payments, payments at writing sisters. And wow, let's go. The newest session, 2020, and the event is charge. We're gonna charge people when they buy something. At the endpoint, that endpoint has a code, the signing secret. I click to review, copy, and I paste it over here. We can use inline credit card form. I will show you later how it looks. The statement descriptor, I can say writing sisters in law. That's what people will see on their bank statement. We capture the money immediately and all these settings are fine. I save the changes. So again, this is in test mode. So if I go to the website, I buy the book and this works. That means it will also work using a real account. So let's go for the pickup 1995 or you know what? Let's buy 100 of them just to make it look better. Only $9.95 to send it. So a total of $2,000 and $4.95. So I need to use this test stuff. I paste it. I paste it. And I paste it. I can save it for future payments. I need to agree with everything. Then I click on place the order. And if this works, it also works with the live version, but then we need to change a few keys. This means that my order has been received. So now if I go to my mail account over here, I see it. Thank you for your order. $2,000. It has been paid already. So it works. And then the great thing is if you go over here, to home, this looks really nice in euros. But again, it are test data results. So I turn this off, then you see the real results. Then I go to developers, API keys, and now I want to create a real key. So at API keys, I create a secret key. And that key name is writing sisters in law. Just to keep it organized if you have a lot of websites. Then I need to copy this code. I go to the back end to WooCommerce settings, go to payments, manage Stripe. Okay, I will turn on off the test mode. Keep in mind that we copied the live secret key and not the publishable key. So I paste it over here. Then we go to the live key. And we paste it. So we're in a live mode. Live, live. Then I scroll down. Then again, I go to webhooks, but this time a live webhook. I copy it. I go to webhooks. Add an endpoint. Paste it over here. Writing sisters in law payment. Recent version. And I want people to be charged. Add the endpoint. I scroll down, the signing secret key, copy it, paste it. And what you saw before was the normal credit card form with two rows. This time I want to have the inline credit card form, which is a little bit more compact. I click on save the changes and right now our website is live. So right now it is in one line, as you see, credit card and date and the CVC code. And now when we pay, I will show you later, it will work. So now people can buy the book, pre-order it on our website. So what is next? We go to the back end. We want to finish the thank you page. So, or create it because it's, there's nothing yet. So I go to cart flows, flows. And remember, we're, we're still using the free version. I think we're doing a pretty great job with it. And then later I will show you what is possible with the paid version. But I think the, the free version is okay to start with. So the thank you page, edit with Elementor. Okay, and there's nothing. So I can scroll down all the way and over here at card flows, I can drag this over here. Nice, we see an example of our most recent purchase. That is how it looks. You can change the text over here. Your order has been received. We can show things, we can hide things. Um, before we continue, I want to click over here. 
change the page layout to template for page builders. Okay. Then I click on the plus an area with one column. I go to the style background type, make it the primary one. Then I go over here. I want to add an icon to start with. So I drag it over here. I want to change it to a check mark. It's called like that, or just a check this one. Then I want to change the color at style to white so we can see it. Okay, make it a little bit smaller. Then I want to add a heading over here and I say, thank you for your order. Again, make the text white, bring it to the center, change the text to, well, it's real already, maybe a little bit like that. Then I want to have a text area and I change the text to white, bring it to the center, make it a bit bigger. Okay, before I continue, I go to the section. I want to make it 900 or 800, something like that. Then I go to advance and I increase the padding. So it gets a little bit more space on all sides. Okay, then I start uh, typing. Okay, I want to make this a link. HTTPS. And then the link. Enter. Click on it again. Open it in a new tab. Update. Okay, and then I make this color or the text bold and white and if we want to underlined yes save it and as i said it's always trial and error see what works i think uh 500 is great. So when people buy it, they go directly to this page. Thank you for your order. As soon as the book is available, you will get it. Or when you've chosen to pick it up, so people don't pay money for the shipping, then they um, can pick it up over here. So there's a little, little bit of space over here. So I'll have the same over here. Padding 40. Okay, for me, that's all there is. When people order something on your website, they get a confirmation email. Um, by default, it looks a little bit boring. And that's the colors of WooCommerce and they all look the same. So if you buy a different product from a different store that also uses WooCommerce that is not edited, it all looks the same. So how can we make it look better? Make it look better in, in the style of our website, maybe add some text. That is what I will show you right now. So right now I want to go to my website. Take a look over here. At Gmail, and then it says your sister's in law order has been received. So I click over here. Thank you for your order. Just to let you know, this and this and this. Well, a few things, of course, I don't like the colors, I don't like the look and feel. So I want to change it. I also want to change the text over here. How can I do that? Well, let me show you. So the first thing I want to change is the from email because this just looks weird. I want to have a writing sister's in law over here. And we can also change the subject. And if I click on it, I see this color. I want to change that. So in order to do that, I go to the back end. I go to WooCommerce, settings, emails. And then you see a lot of emails over here. And we can change those. For instance, the new order email. But first, let me scroll down. The from name is sisters in law and the from address. I want to change it to info at sisters in law. That's come. Of course not. <laughs> Writing sisters in law. Otherwise, someone else gets that email. Let me see. Yeah. 
Wow, that's a beautiful website. <laughs> that was a joke. So the header image, really important, but uh, we'll take a look at it later. So first, the base color. So if I go to the website, I edit it with Elementor. I go to the site settings and then to the global colors and I grab this color, command C, command V. There it is. And you can change the background color, the body background color and the body text. I'm okay with all this. So I scroll down, I save the changes. Then I want to go to the media in a new tab, command click. I want to search for the logo. There it is, the black one. I copy this URL. Okay, what I can do, I can save the logo. So I paste it, I save it to my desktop. I call this logo email. Then I add a new one. I drag it over here. There it is. Then I go to my email and over here, shift command four. Drag the space. Okay, let's say 400 pixels. I want the logo to appear over here and it needs to be 400 pixels in width. So I open this logo email. I edit the image. I want to bring it back to 400. I click on scale. Now it's scaled, now it's smaller. I cannot save it. That means that it is already saved. So I close this. I go to the library. Then I go to the most recent image, which which is our logo. This is the big one. And over here is the smaller one. Then I copy this URL, 400 pixels width. Then over here, I scroll down and I paste the header image. Okay, then we see this line over here, the footer text. So over here, we see this footer text. And if it's up to me, I don't need it. But hey, it's your website. If you want to write something over there, you can do that. I save the changes. Oops, so far we added a logo, we changed this color and we removed this text. So let's take it to the next level, step by step. Over here it says, thanks for using writing sisters in law. And I want to change this over here. How can I do that? Well, for that, we need to go to a specific email, which is the processing order that goes to the customer as you see over here. So I can click on manage. Now I can change the information on this particular email. So the subject right now, your order has been received. That's what you see over here. Your sister's in law order has been received. So I can uh, say over here, thank you for your order at writing sisters in law.com. The email heading is probably what you see over here. So we can also paste it and then additional content. Thanks for using writing sisters in law. That's what you see. Thanks for using and then the side URL. So what I can say over here is we hope you will enjoy the book or the product you promote. Kind regards Anna and Paula Corpusuk. Email type HTML, otherwise, this can all not be created. It will be a really flat email with no styling and stuff. I don't want that. So I save the changes. And now we're going to take it to the next level. So right now we have adjusted a lot of things over here. Now I want to change this text. How can we do that? We are still here at the emails and then the processing order email. And if I want to adjust things, I can do that by clicking here. I can copy this file, which is a PHP file. So we are talking about codes. We can copy the file to the theme, copy it. Now it's copied. Now we can to go to appearance, theme editor. Now we need to search for the folder WooCommerce at the right. It's a little bit technical. I understand that if I mess things up over here. My website can get into trouble. So I scroll down over here. I will show you step by step what you need to do. We see a folder over here, WooCommerce. And now we see this email and the processing order. We can click over here. Now we can adjust 
this text. You need to go to probably line 30. And over here it says, just to let you know, we received your order. If I go over here, just to let you know, we received your order. So what I want to do, this whole code between the P and the end of the P, the paragraph, I want to select it, remove it, and now I can type my own text. So I can say, thank you for your order. You can expect, expect the book in October 2021. If you decided to pick it up, you can do that at the Luikenstraat 36. 3145 in Sluis, the Netherlands. So that makes totally sense, total sense, because I sell it to, the, to Canada and the United States, and you can pick it up in the Netherlands. So I think this book is so valuable that people are willing to go to the Netherlands to pick it up. Or they can, can let it be sent to their address. So um, you can have any, you can have a lot of text over here if you want to. And then uh, I think that is okay. I want to save it, update the file. And now I want to do another payment, but I don't want to pay with real money. So what I will do, I will go to WooCommerce, Settings, Payments, Direct Bank Transfer, turn it on, save the changes. Then I go to the website, I close this, and I close this. I go to Buy Our Book. All the information is there. I want to pick it up. I want to pay with a direct bank transfer. I agree to everything. So I let me see. The the email address should be 30 corp at gmail.com. I click on place order. Awesome. Thank you for your order. So right now, look at this. Let me see if I can open this in a new tab. Now we see it over here from info at writing systems and law. So I still need to change that. Thank you for your order at writingsistersinlaw.com. That's what we decided to change. The logo, thank you for your order at writingsistersinlaw. Okay, so this is also wrong. I will change that. Sorry, it's been a while since I did it. But this is working. The colors are working. We hope you will enjoy the book. So that's working. So, okay. So far, so good. Two things I need to adjust. So I go back to the back end. Then I go to WooCommerce, Settings, Emails. Then I can go to processing order, manage, email heading. I can remove this, otherwise it looks like this. But you see the difference. Thank you for your order. Info at 30 Corp. Info at writing sisters in law. And then over here, this needs to be changed. That's what I just did. And we change the text. And it all looks fine. It looks fine. We also change that text over here. Save the changes. This is the way it is displayed in Gmail. So I cannot change that, but I've changed this. So I'm happy with this. So now when people buy something, they get this over here. They get to see this. Thank you for your order without this one. Then a personal or a personal, how do you say that? Personalized message or a configured message. And then the billing address. We hope you enjoy the book. So that looks better. There will be a tutorial where I will even show you more on how to adjust this. So it will not be recognizable as a WooCommerce product order. But this is for now what we can do. Let's talk about shipping. I want to give people the opportunity to pick up the product from our local store or to let it be sent to their home address. So when they pick it up, it is free. There are no costs added. And when they Want to uh, when I want to send it to their address or they want me to send it to their address based on the amount of products they order or based on the total amount they have to pay, I want to decide how much shipping cost there will be. And that is what I will show you next in this tutorial. Feel free to like the video and subscribe for more coming videos. Yes, okay, let's continue. Have you already subscribed or liked? What are you waiting for? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, guys. No, you're free to do whatever you want to do. Let's continue. Right now, when we buy the book, 
there is no shipping. It costs $19.95. By the way, if you want to change this to dollars, we can do that in the back end. Go to WooCommerce settings. Scroll down. And we can change it over here to United States dollars. A thousand separators is a comma, a decimal is a point. And we want to have two numbers after the decimals. Perfect. So now when we want to buy the book, we don't pay in euros. We buy, we pay in dollars. As you see over here. Okay. Shipping. I go to the back end and we go to plugins at new. And I search for flexible shipping from WP desk. Well, nothing's found because I made a typo flexible shipping. WP Desk, I click on install now. More than 100,000 installations updated two weeks ago, compatible with our current version of WordPress. I activate it. Okay, I close this. Now I go to shipping, shipping zones. And before we do that, we need to go to general. We can decide where we want to sell to. Selling location sells to all countries or to specific countries. So I can say, United States and to Canada. So now you can only sell to those two countries. Then we go to shipping and we need to choose a zone. So we do, and we need to choose a shipping method. So I want to add a shipping zone, zone, zone. How do you say that? And I call this one pick up or send the regions. Well, select regions within these this zone, zone, sorry, Canada and United States. So the shipping methods are two. First, let me save it. The first one is pick up. So I choose flexible shipping at the shipping method. And I can edit this by giving it a different name, pick up. So uh, they should pick up up in country I or the address I give it so they can pick it up in the store. They know it's to pay for shipping. Uh, it is taxable. So when people add a 20% of discount and the shipping is $5, 20% of taxes will be added to that $5. So that's why they turn on free shipping. It is free. So actually it's all fine. Everything is free, $0. Then the second option. So I click on pick up or send. Then I create the second way and that is flexible shipping. And then I call this send. You can call this whatever you want to call this method description. We send it, we deliver it to your front door. I don't know, something like that. No, no description. Again, text this is all fine, but something important over here, we need to add conditions. So I can add a rule based on the price or the weight. Well, if we do the weight, we need to go to the product and add the weight of the product. I want to go with the price. So what I say, the price is from, from minimum of zero to $20, it is $4.50. I can add a rule. The price from 20 to 50 is $7.50. And if people want to buy for at least 50 to a maximum of this, you pay 9.95. So I save the changes. But I also can do 19.99. So from 0 to 90.99, you pay 450. 20 to 49.99, 750, etc. So based on these calculations and based on what people choose, they will get it for free so they can pick it up to book or they get it shipped to their house and then based on how many books they buy, calculations of the shipping is made. So I buy the book now 
then I can choose an option right now, but I cannot do that because first I need to know where I live, Canada, and then it will say it's $4.50. Why? Because I only buy one. If I would buy two, I would pay $7.50. But where is the option to pick it up? Well, that's my bad. I showed you something that was wrong. I need to go to WooCommerce, to settings. Then we go to shipping and I go to pick up or send. And I have two times flexible shipping, but I need to add a shipping method, which is called local pickup. That's it. And then I need to remove this pickup, save it. And now if I refresh this page, I can choose. So if I buy two, it will cost me 750 unless I decide, look at this 47, 40, unless I decide to pick it up. 39.90. Okay, we use the free version of Card Flows. So let me show you what we can do with Card Flows Pro. Imagine using Card Flows Pro, you can increase the conversion percentage on your website with 5%. What does it mean? That means from 100 people that visit your website, five extra people will buy the product. Well, my product is $20. So that would mean uh, I have $100 extra when I use Cardflows Pro per 100 visitors. That is $1 per visitor I get. And I know it's all theory, but I believe that the way you use Cardflows, you implement it in your website, it you, you will increase the conversion rate because the, the form people need to fill in is easier to read, it's easier to fill in. You don't have to fill in all the unnecessary stuff. So let me show you in the next coming minutes what you can do with card flows pro so how can i make sure people can change as well that has everything to do with the free version of card flows if i go to card flows flows and i go you do to, you don't talk about that to the checkout page and i go to products and i scroll down and i want to use more options so people can choose it let me show you an example in the dutch website i use card flows for this it looks like this i can change the the text over here, front name, back name, all this information. It looks cleaner in my opinion than here below. You see the product and I can change it. And right now I can decide to send, let it be sent to my home. It's 450, but if I order two, it becomes 725. And then I can pay over here. I, I think this looks better. And if I want to have all those options, I can go with Cardflows Pro. In my opinion, again, let me show you what they have made in one month, 1100 euros, which is around $1,300 in one month. So when it comes to web hosting, Elementor Pro and Cardflows Pro, I think personally, it's a great deal because it will optimize the conversion of your shop. So you will sell more. So if we go to ferdicorp.com forward slash Cardflows, this is an affiliate link. When you buy this through my link, I get a commission. So thank you for that. You don't pay more. Go to pricing. As I said before, you can buy it for $239 and you can always upgrade later. So if you want to go for the lifetime version later, you can do that. Or you go at once for the lifetime version, you can use it on 30 websites. And if you want to know everything about card flows, you can go to YouTube and search for card flows tutorial. And if you don't find me, well, you find me two and a half hours of tutorials where I show you so much there is to know about it a recent tutorial and they keep on improving the the, the plugin but it's an, an amazing plugin so if you want to learn everything about it you can do that you can click on get started fill in your details and if you use this coupon code vip20 off well it's really nice you get a discount and then after a year you pay 2.99 again or you go for the lifetime version well this is also made with card flows it just looks really nice so when you have done that you go over here you can go to downloads and you can download card flows pro over here i click on download there it goes i go to my api key i copy it i close this i go to plugins at new Upload plugin. I drag it over here. Install now. Activate the plugin. And I need to activate the Cardflow 
license. So I click here to activate it. I paste it. I activate it. It's successfully activated. So now I can use all the pro stuff. So first, let me go to card flows, flows. Then I want to go to the only flow we have and then the checkout page. So I click over here and now if we go to products over here, look at this, all those options. I check this, this is the product. We can have a subtext, we can highlight it. Restrict user to purchase all products or let it choose. Well, we only have one product in this list, so that's okay. But we want to enable the quantity. So I save the settings. If I go to the website, I buy the book. And now we, when we scroll down, it looks like this. We can change the amount. And when we buy two, look at this at the shipping, it is more. But we see it double now. So what we need to do, we need to configure it in a way that it looks better. So that is what we will do now. I will make sure this will look so much better. How can we do that over here? I save the settings again, just because I like to do that, even though it already was saved. Otherwise we cannot see the results. I go to the design. I want to edit it with Elementor. Close this, close this. And I close this. Then I scroll down, I click over here and now I have more options so I can select one column. So it looks like this. And now it makes sense that when we change things over here, of course, here is the end result. Awesome. I can make this a little bit smaller. So how wide is this? 800. How wide is this? Also 800. I think it's okay. So in my opinion, this looks okay. What I want to do now, I want to change this stuff over here because it's so overwhelming that even on this page, people can decide to leave the page because they're like, whoa, so much information. So we want to make it as short as possible, only the necessary information. So it is easier for people to fill in and they buy the thing you promote instead of filling, let them, them fill in all this information. That's one of the reasons why I think it's a great choice to upgrade to the pro version. So look at this. How can we make this look better? Well, let me go to the back end. Then I go to cart flows. Flows. You don't talk about like you don't talk like about that. Okay, what am I talking about? You don't talk about that. Then I go to the first step, the, the checkout. And then I go to the form fields. So do I enable a coupon field? No, because I don't have one. Additional fields? No. Enable ship to different address? No. And we can have the custom field editor. So do I want to show the first name and the last name? Well, if I take a look. Yes, I think this looks great. First name, last name. Country, region? Yes. Street address? Yes. The town? The state doesn't matter to me. The zip code does matter. Do I want to have their phone if I don't need it? No. And their email address? Yes. So they can get an email with the confirmation. Let's save the settings. And when it is saved, I refresh the page. First name, last name, country, street, town, zip, and then email address. I want to make this look better. So the street address, I want it to be so, so, um, okay, let me do it a different way around. First name, last name, and then street address. The street address, I want it to be 33%. I think address will ju be just fine. It is required. Then the town, I just like to say city, 33%. Zip code, 33%. Zip code. Is it 33? Yes, it is. And then the country, if you want to, you can make it 50. And then this one also 50. And then it fits perfectly. So I refresh the page. Now it looks like this. 
but I think we can do it like this. Okay. First name, last name, street address, 100%. And the town, or should you do the zip code first? Well, that's how easy it is. Just change it. Make this 50, make this 50, and the country can be 100%. And the email address can also be 100%. Save the settings. Refresh the page. Perfect. First name, last name, address, zip code, city, country, email address, and then your products. You can have more in your order. So 450, and then if I upgrade it, then 750. And if I would make it a third one, 995. And if I buy 10, it still will be 995 because that is how we arranged it, configured it. So the great thing is when people pay now, they pay this amount of money, it will go to our Stripe account. And I know I need to send them five books to this address. And I want to change a few more things. First, over here, I want to make this smaller. I think it's a little bit too far away from each other. So let's make it 600. Update. Then when it's updated, I close this. Then I want to go to the back end to cart flows flows. You don't talk about that. The checkout. Then I go to the form fields. Okay. First name is okay. Last name, address, and then zip code. I make it 33 city 33 and the country. They all have to do something with the location. So I want to have them in one row and then the email address 100. So it will be a little bit more compact, compact. I think that's good. So ladies and gentlemen, our website, really nice. More information, the about page, then buy our book. Scroll down. First name, last name, address, zip code, city, country, email address. Want to local pickup or send it. If I send two by two, this will be increased. Then we can pay. When we buy this, we go to the thank you page with some information on where to pick it up if we decide to do a local pickup. And then we have a beautiful email we get in our inbox. We as the seller, the store owner, we get an email and the buyer who leaves their email address. Over here, we'll get a confirmation email. We adjusted it. So I think everything looks really beautiful. We need to take a look at the terms and conditions, privacy policy. And then if I go to the home page, of course, we need to configure the about page and the contact page. Let me go to Elementor real quick. And then over here, item one, nothing. Nothing, no background, especially not one that has nothing to do with the style of our website. So I go to the dashboard. Okay. I go back to WordPress and I want to create a new template called the footer. So I go to templates, theme builder. I choose the new one. I go to the footers. I create a new one. I don't use blocks. I start from scratch. So, um, I go to the settings. I call this one general footer. Publish it at a condition, show it on the entire website. Okay. Then I want to go for a simple text area, text editor. Oh, here it is because it's the footer. It's here. I need to scroll down, drag it over here. First go to the text area. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait the, of the section style background, make it dark. Then I go over here to the text. I make it white. And then I start typing copyright 2021. And then the writing sisters in law and then a few important links like privacy 
policy terms of service photography Lisa Rochelle photography because uh, I decided over I I when this these pictures were made of my wife and my sister-in-law we decided that we should give credit so that's what I want to do over here how can I make this a link I selected command K or control K or I click over here and then I search for privacy and then it will appear like that okay same with terms of service command K terms okay and the third one let me see if this is the website yes she also made pictures on my wedding hey few people i know really nice okay it's a small world it's a small country the netherlands okay what i see is that those colors are um pink i don't want that how can i fix that well let me show you in a minute first i want to go to the style bring it to the center text color is white typography i want to make it a little bit smaller and i want to go to the background make it lighter because this is really dark okay update now I see those colors of the links. I don't like it. Also, when I hover over it, how can I fix that? I go to 30corp.com. Then I go to tutorials, WooCommerce, and there's a code I have made specially for you. So you can copy that, change the link colors, copy it. Then we select this area. Go to advanced, scroll down to the custom CSS and paste it. Bam. Then we can change those colors over here. This is the color you see. And when you hover over it, it becomes white. And that's what I said over here. When I hover over it, it is white. I update it. Then I go to the column settings. I want to bring it to the middle and to the center. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. <laughs> I can go to advanced. Here, increase things a little bit until I think this looks great update click over here on the section okay i want to duplicate this area okay then i go to this one content i remove it so i can Hover over, remove it. I want to change the color a bit, a bit lighter. I don't feel the colors yet. I don't know. I think it can be better, but let's take a look at it later. I want to use an icon list like that and show a bit more information. I bring it to inline like that. And at style, I bring it to the center. I go to the icon. And the color is okay. The hover is also okay. But the text, I want it to be white. So I go to list. Uh, sorry, content. List item one. Something with business. Yes. And then there's the, the, the number of my company. So in the Netherlands, it is this. And the second one, letter or mail or envelope, envelope. People can write at info at 30 or writing sisters in law.com. So they can, uh, people can reach out. And then the third one, an address. A lot of times when you have a web shop, you need to have an address. So over here, I can have a point or mark, map marker. And then I say this address. Yes. 
of course also here i want to have a little bit more space i think i did over here okay let's fix the the background colors somehow it seems like it's not perfectly gray there's a kind of a, a tint okay and then this one can be a bit darker personal preference okay so as i said before i i will show this everywhere uh, it's a general footer so you see it everywhere how does it look well, that's what I thought. It's not what I like. So what I can do, and then over here, I apply the same principle. I use a BR break code. And yeah, that fixes it. So I don't need it on a, another device. And this one, maybe I do. So I duplicate it over here. This one is for everything except for a mobile and this one is for nothing except for a mobile. And then over here, I can change everything. So I can say shift enter, shift enter, shift enter, shift enter. And I'll say, Like that, maybe a little bit more space. Update. And what I would do if I were you, always check everything on all uh, devices. Also the whole buying process. It will be uh, uh, really bad if people cannot buy it somehow and you send an email to a lot of people. So now we have our footer. Oh no, okay. Sorry, keep on learning. We do have to duplicate it. Edit the footer. I duplicate it over here. I remove the break and it is visible everywhere except on a mobile. This one, I keep it as this and I will Hide it on a desktop, hide it on a tablet, but on a smartphone, it looks like that. Better. So now it looks like that and like that, like that. But what we see over here, those colors are great, but this color is gone. And this word is Dutch, so I need to change it. How can we do that? Let's go back to the page, the home page. Okay, I scroll down. Click over here, go to style, change the text color to white. There it is. Go to content, more information, and then this can go to buy our book or just the same link as over here. Right mouse click, copy link address, and paste it. And then you can also remove this. So only forward slash you don't talk about that check out. So when they click over here, they go directly to that page. So I refresh the page. Those links are perfect. This one is perfect. If I click on it, I go to the checkout and that's what we want to do because we want to check everything out. Fill in the details. I live in the United States. This is my email. I want to buy one. I want to pick it up. And I want to pay with credit card. People can save it. So for the next purchase, I agree to the terms and conditions and I place my order. Then I go to the thank you page. It's a real thank you page. It's a real order with real money. It says, thank you for your order as soon as the book is available, probably October 21. We will send, you it, send it to you at once. If you have chosen to pick it up, we can find it over here. Thank you for your order, the amount, the order details, the billing address, and um, if I go to my mail account, I see this email. I made a, uh, they, uh, I have a payment. So that's great. And over here, I see my 
email because I also bought it through this email address. Now, if I go back, I go to WooCommerce orders. I see the orders. And if I take a look, it's in process. I can take a look over here. It should go to this address so I can get all the information over here. The payment, etc. If you want to, you can go back to the orders. Select one, bulk action, change to completed. And then if you would go to WooCommerce, settings, emails, and then to completed order, you can manage it. Do the same thing as with the before, copy to the theme, and then adjust this template. So we can you can say your order is completed. It is so for instance, if you have brought it to FedEx or to DHL or UPS, then you can send an email. We just sent your email to UPS and it will be delivered within 24 hours. That's what you can change as I, as I, as I showed you before. Okay, we have most of the stuff finished on our website. Now I want to talk about the about page, the contact page. Let's finish it up with that. And then we have our complete website. What is next? Of course, the about page. So I added the page, the about page. Then I added it with Elementor. I go over here to the settings, hide the title, change it to Elementor full width, and it will save automatically. Okay, I click over here. I want to have two columns. At the left, I want to have a heading. And I say, Anna about Paula. So Anna talks a story about Paula. And then I can go to the dummy text generator. And I want to have uh, five paragraphs. Like that. So I copy this. I go to the text editor. And I paste it. So that's the text about Paula, written by Anna. Then I want to have an image of my sister-in-law. The photo is also made by Eliza Rochelle. Because I need to give credit, of course. I choose this image. And what I would like to do, click over here. Go to Advanced, Motion Effects. Fade it in from the right. Fade this in here from the left. Okay, then I do the same thing. Or maybe I want to go over here, go to advanced, increase the padding to 40. And I duplicate it. I switch it the other way around. Click over here, find an image of my wife. Insert, then Paula about Anna. When the book would be published in English, I will English. I will let you know. So that is how you can do that. If you don't want to have any edges over here, you can uncheck this and uncheck this also over here. Okay. So this one should come from the left and this one should come from the right. And she is giving birth within seven days from now to our daughter, which is amazing, of course. So I'm making my latest tutorials. I will schedule them and then uh, while this is uploaded, I am doing diapers and stuff, being awake at night, but I'm totally up for it. The contact page, edit the page, edit with Elementor. Okay. Over here, same thing. Full width and the title is gone by default. I want to start with a heading. Then over here, I want to make this 800, bring the heading 
to the center and say feel free to reach out advanced margin 60 maybe that's a lot 40 40 40 40 If you have any question, feel free to reach out to us. Okay. Now this can be um, aligned at the left. This can be nothing, only at the top. And then we can have a form, form, and there it is. If you want to create an in-depth form, you can go to YouTube, Elementor, form, tutorial, also mine, two months ago, 45 minutes. So you can do quite a few nice things with it. I want to do a small thing. I want to get rid of labels and that's it. Update. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our website over here with a home page, with an about page, with a contact page, with a link to Instagram. You can follow them if you want to support them. Then we have buy our book besides this beautiful footer over here. And then you can buy this over here by filling in these details change the quantity if you change the quantity you will also change the shipping unless you decide to pick it up locally or like this it will be added over here i showed you how to add stripe and i showed you how to adjust the confirmation email they get when they place the order and in that way you can create a single product website within wordpress with woocommerce elementor pro and card flows Okay, actually we're finished, but I want to do one more thing in order to optimize the conversion on our website. I go to the website. This is the backend. This is the backend and I click again and I go to the homepage. We have a beautiful call to action over here, but I think we can also have one over here because right now we don't see it and we want to optimize conversion and that can be done by having another call to action over here. So I edit the page with Elementor. I click over here. I go to item one. I go to content and I can say we write about things that one do not often talk about. We okay, we can make this a long text, but the shorter it is, the better. I know I can make this better. So write in one sentence what you want to sell. So this is the second area, the second uh, slides. Okay, nice. Then the button text by our book. Let me update it. Open it in a new tab. Right mouse click, copy the link address, paste it over here. Get rid of this if you want to. Apply link on the whole slide. That's what I prefer. Then it looks like that, and it's not visible. So, what I can also do, paste it over here, and then we can go to the background. And use a background overlay. We wrote about things that women do not often talk about buy our book or more information. So what we can do a hard call to action, buy our book and more information. So more information and then they go to our landing page. Style. We can have a custom style, place it at the left, the top, align the text or what you can do. Create a text shadow, so that way maybe you don't need a background. We write about things that women do not often talk about. More information. It's up to you. Okay, I will use um, that, and then I go to the styling. I can decrease this, and I'm okay with it. But I want to change the text. First, let me go to content to the slider options and no autoplay. So I can fix on this area. 
Then I go to the title. Railway is okay. Four hundred. Uppercase. But no. So it gives you a lot of freedom to do whatever you want to do. And over here, the button of course can be changed to the border color like that. This one be white and then when people hover over it, you know what I like white better and when they hover over it, I can change the background color to this one. We write about things that women do not often talk about. More information. We can also make the button bigger. And of course, let's take a look on the mobile. No. Or just 100%. We write about things that women do not often talk about. Buy our book, more information. Update. And of course, feel free to give it your own twist until you are satisfied. We write about things that women do not often talk about. Right now, there's no automation anymore in the slide. So what happens when you end this slide? It seems to go on forever. So if that's what you want to do, you can do that. I can edit it with Elementor. Click over here. Go to the slider options and make make it autoplay. Make it pause and hover. Pause and interaction. Well, it's up to you. Update. Now that is it. So we have a nice call to action. And when we click on it, we can show the more information we are talking about. And I think I keep on thinking about things we should add images of Anna and Paula over here. Assuming you don't use them in your website, you can do whatever you want to do on this page. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a ton of stuff. You're able now to sell your products on your website and have a high conversion rate because that's all what we want. We want to have a high conversion rate. A lot of people that visit your website, we want the most amount of people that buy the product you promote on your website. And I think with this website you have right now, you're able to pull that off. So now maybe you can start running ads to your website and then you pay $2 in advertisement and maybe earn three or four or five dollars in revenue. That would be great. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Feel free to leave a comment with feedback or with your gratitude if it is there. And then I wish you the best with selling products on your website. Bye bye.